Perfect, we are live. Oh, here they come. Welcome everybody. We're gonna be starting shortly. Just give you a minute to settle on in. And we're gonna start exactly in a minute or two. Let us know in the chat where you're coming from. Welcome everybody, good morning, happy Tuesday. I hope everyone is ready for a little bit of vacation, a long weekend ahead of us. Hello, Toronto, welcome. I'm sure we're gonna get lots of Toronto area folks today. We'll see if we get any folks out from uh, Western. Oh, there we go, Western Canada, hello BC. I hope it's not too hot out there for you today. We're gonna start up in a minute or two. We're on a pretty tight schedule here today, so. Hello Pickering, folks from some new market area. Welcome. Alberta, welcome Alberta. I know it's really hot at your, your way this, this last couple of days. Fantastic. All right, one more minute and then we are going to get started. Very excited today for conversation that we are about to have. It's gonna be fantastic. Hello, Mississauga. Welcome, everybody. Ottawa area, Markham, Scarborough, Guelph, welcome. Glad to have you all joining us today. A little different setup if you've ever been with us for a Hi Mama Helps. A little different today, a little more serious, but we're going to still have a bit of fun uh, no matter what. So welcome, Huntsville, Niagara, Niagara Falls. I, I did see that, right? All right. Welcome if you're just joining us. We are going to get started and dive in here. Let's get chatting a little bit more. Welcome all who's joining us here today. We're going to be talking a little bit more about the Canada-wide childcare, you know, plan. I'm sure many of you have heard about this. You've heard of, you know, we tons of news press going on about what's to come over the next several years um, and what's to change for childcare. So, before we do get in, I always like to cover a couple of bases of housekeeping pieces. Um, where, as always, this is not legal, financial, or you know, any sort of advice you should be taking away. The idea around our webinar series is that you take tips tricks, techniques, as well as in this case, maybe just thoughts, questions that you may have and, and you know, provoking you to take away a little bit more about what's going on and changes that are to come. Um, if you are obviously making any changes, make sure to consult the right people, whether that be your legal, your financial, um, you know, even your licensing advisor, whoever that may be. Uh, we're going to jump into uh, the next two statements here for a quick listen to our land acknowledgement to start. Hi Mama acknowledges that our main headquarters is situated in Toronto, Ontario on the traditional territory of many nations including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa. Toronto itself is a word that originates from the Mohawk word Takaranto, meaning the place in the water where the trees are standing. As participants and guests in today's webinars, we are coming together from many different places around the world. We encourage you to learn about and acknowledge the land from which you participate. Let's live, listen to our diversity and inclusion statement. Hi Mama is committed to fostering an inclusive and welcoming environment for our employees, customers, and community. Hi Mama welcomes and celebrates individuals of all backgrounds, orientations, and identities. Our diversity, inclusion, and belonging committee aims to ensure we provide a safe environment for everyone to thrive while bringing their authentic selves to work. Our mission is to promote an inclusive workspace for all employees through education, discussion, and celebration of our differences. Embracing these differences while coming together with a common purpose is what makes our team extra special. couple of housekeeping pieces for today, folks. We are recording this session. So if you do want to access it later, you definitely can do. We'll be sending it out with the show notes. We are also uh, recording with closed captions on. So if you do need to use that, please do hit the CC tab. It's available for you. And like I said, it will be available with the recording as well. <laughs> 
Regarding show notes, everything will be sent out. You can expect everything early next week. So will be the recording and the slides from today. There will be no certificate sent out with this session. So just so that you're aware. And last but not least, if you're having any uh, connection trouble with Zoom, I apologize the noise part there, the volume that was on me, got her fixed, we're good to go. But if you are having any connection issues, please, please, please do seek support.zoom.us. They are the best folks. They uh, know their product the best there. All right, before we jump in, lastly here, I want to just do a quick little plug for ourselves. If you've never heard of Hi Mama, if this is your first time joining us, um, please do check us out. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to have a conversation with you about how we can help you in your child care center and, uh, and, and actually work with you and see if we can get you going here with Hi Mama. So please don't be shy. You can actually book some time with us if you'd like. I'll get uh, Morgan to just pop that into the chat now. We'd love to have you um, joining the Hi Mama family. And last but not least, we also have tons and tons of resources that are available, free resources. So from our blog posts, from our podcast, which the minister was on just recently. So if you want to subscribe, you definitely can to get a quick peek at that, uh, as well as just articles, activities, things you might be looking for. They are available for you there. Uh, now, just to get a better idea of who's joining us here today, I've got a quick poll. It shall be up in a minute here. Um, takes a second to load on your end, I know. Perfect. You should be able to answer that. We'd just love to know who's joining us today. So whether you are an educator, center owner, director, whoever you may be, mom or dad, uh, other you know members of the community, we'd love to know who's joining us. And then as well, just how versed you are in what's happening right now. The education space, there's so many changes happening. Uh, just to get an idea, lots of folks have heard about it. You know some things about the plan. Fantastic. And many center owners and directors joining us today. Love it. Glad to have you all here with us. I'll give you folks just a couple more seconds here to answer it up because I know it takes a moment to get through on your side. So, Fantastic. Glad to see folks joining us. We're kind of cutting half now, roughly around half educator, half uh, center owners, directors. Glad to have you all joining us. It's fantastic that you're taking a bit of time out of uh, your day to be with us. So. All right, folks, I'm going to end up the poll so you will not be able to access that after I end the poll just so that you're very aware. Thank you so much for taking some time to let us know. Let's jump in quick intros here uh, for myself to start. I'm Rhea, I'm one of the early childhood educators here at Hi Mama, and I'm also the community ambassador. And for many of you folks who may know me, I'm also the host of our Hi Mama webinar series uh, that you may see us on regularly on Thursdays. We also have a session happening tomorrow. As you know, Canada Day is happening, we'll all be off. Next up, we're gonna have uh, the Minister Ahmed Hussein joining us, uh, Minister of Families, Children and Social Development. He's be gonna be giving us some opening remarks in just a minute here, and we'll be having some further conversation with him today, as well as Ryan. We have Ryan joining us from Helping Hands Daycare. If you've never been on any of our Hi Mama Help webinar series, Ryan's been on a couple of sessions with us, uh, very open to what's happening in the education space and a huge advocate for what's happening. Last but not the least, Amanda Monday is also joining us, founder and CEO of The Workaround, also a huge advocate for educators and what's happening in the space for moms. I, I want to say for everybody, actually, when it comes down to Amanda, but things that are definitely happening and that pertain to pieces that are going on um, within education all around. So I'm very excited, Minister, to welcome you on. Please do join us here as we do jump into opening remarks. Thank you for taking some time to be with us today. Thank you. Your schedule, I'm sure, is very, very packed on a regular basis, but I'd love to hand over the mic to you to give us a couple of comments about what's happening right now in education. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning to, to all of you. I'm just setting myself up here. Good morning, Bon Matin. Thank you, Ria and the Hi Mama community for the warm welcome. And before I begin, uh, like you, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm joining you virtually. Uh, from uh, Ottawa, the traditional territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabeg peoples. Je suis d'être ici aujourd'hui pour parler de nos plans pour bâtir un système pan-canadien d'apprentissage et de, de garde de jeunes enfants. It's great to be here today to talk about our plans for building a Canada-wide early learning and childcare system. We know that COVID-19 pandemic 
has made life more difficult for Canadian families. But it has also opened our eyes to something many of us have known for a very long time, which is that without childcare, parents, usually mothers, can't simply work. Too many mothers are forced to give up the job they love to provide care for their children. This is not anecdotal. We know that the pandemic has driven women's participation in the labor force down to its lowest level in more than 20 years. By April, April of this year, more than 16,000 women had dropped out of the labor market completely, while the male labor force growth had increased by 91,000. So COVID-19 pandemic has also had a particular impact on the labor force participation of racialized and low income women with young children. We know, for example, that uh, due to the pandemic, fewer black Canadian women with children were, wor were working during the pandemic compared to mothers who do not identify as visible minorities. Nous nous pouvons par les aides, la pandémie nous faire reculer sur les progrès et les gains pour lesquels les femmes et leurs, leurs alliés se sont battus si fort. We can't let the legacy of the pandemic be one of rolling back of the progress and gains made by women and their allies and who have fought so hard to secure over the years. It's been nearly 50 years since the Royal Commission on the Status of Women outlined the necessity of childcare services for women's social and economic equality. Canadian families need more high quality, affordable, flexible and accessible and inclusive childcare. It is critical to make progress on a Canada-wide early learning and childcare system for families as we move through to recovery and to our economy as we create a solid economic foundation for Canadians well into the future. We have to ensure that our, our economic recovery is inclusive and, no, and leaves no one behind. Part of our plan is to address the high costs that parents continue to face for early learning and childcare services. These fees, these childcare fees can, uh, can be different from one province to another or one territory to another. Uh, from an average of $20 for childcare fees in Manitoba to an average of $48 for childcare fees in Ontario. Uh, for example, take a family living in uh, Toronto with two children, one toddler and one preschool aged child. That family could be paying over $30,000 annually out of pocket for their children to attend uh, daycare with only some money going back into their pockets at tax time. But it's not just the high costs that parents are facing. The Center for uh, the Canadian Center for Policy Alternatives has shown that Canadian childcare enrollment during the pandemic has been lower in these high fee regions, and the programs are experiencing a drop in revenue from this lower enrollment, which is in turn putting their childcare centers at risk. This can mean reduced spaces for parents and present a barrier for parents to return to work. For all these reasons, the need for a Canada-wide early learning and childcare system is incredibly urgent. The pandemic has reminded us that childcare is not a luxury, it is a necessity. That's why Budget 2021 allocates $30 billion over the next five years and $9.2 billion each year after that to build this Canada-wide system of affordable, high quality, inclusive and accessible childcare. Our goal is to ensure that over the next five years, all families, no matter where they live, will have access to early learning and childcare for an average of $10 a day. And by the end of 2022, we want to cut childcare fees by half. We aim to grow affordable childcare spaces across the country by building on the 40,000 new affordable childcare spaces that we've contributed to since 2015. And we know that uh, in addition to affordability, we have to ensure that there is accessibility and quality. La pandémie de la COVID-19 a présenté des vrais défis pour les nombreuses communautés et familles, et les communautés autochtones ne font pas exception. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused many communities and families to struggle 
and indigenous communities and families are no exception. More than ever, indigenous communities need sustained access to high quality and affordable and culturally appropriate early learning and childcare. This is why indigenous governments and communities will be engaged in, in co-developing and co-building this new Canada-wide system of early learning and childcare. In fact, our investments allocate $2.5 billion additionally to make sure that we are co-developing this system of indigenous early learning and childcare. We also want to ensure that childcare is fully inclusive for children with the disabilities, for racialized kids, and for kids from marginalized uh, households. This early learning and childcare system is about building the Canada that we really want to see after the pandemic. It's a chance for our country to offer each and every child the best possible start in life, to simply ensure that no child is left behind. It'll change our society. It'll give more children the best start in life and give parents, especially mothers, the support that they need so that they can finish their education or participate in training and maintain good jobs for their families. So this is not only good for families, it makes good economic sense. Take the same example of the family in Toronto. Under the Canada-wide uh, child care plan, this family could save up to $15,000 per year out of pocket. So this would make a tremendous difference in that family's uh, budget. There's also broad consensus from all parts of society, including the private sector, that childcare is a vital part of our social infrastructure that has been weakened by the COVID-19 pandemic. This is particularly true for vulnerable children and their families, and we have to make sure that those vulnerable children and their parents are able to access the system and benefit from it. In Quebec, where the provincial government has been investing in high quality uh, childcare for over two decades, maternal labor force participation rates were five to 9% points higher than in the rest of Canada in 2019. If women in the rest of Canada participated in the labor market in the same level as Quebec, it would add approximately 240,000 workers to our labor force in today's terms. And TD Economics estimates that for every dollar spent on early childhood education, the broader economic return is between $1.50 to $2.80. Ce plan vise à stimuler la croissance économique, à accroître la participation des femmes sur le marché du travail et à offrir à chaque enfant du Canada le meilleur départ possible dans la vie. Uh, this is a plan to drive economic growth. It's a plan to increase women's participation in the labor market. And it's a plan to offer each and every child in Canada the best possible start in life. And we will get it done. Of course, this work has not come out of thin air. Since 2017, we've had uh, bilateral agreements with provinces and territories where we have advanced federal money to provinces and territories to create more affordable childcare spaces. Between 2019 and 2020, we've also provided more supports to Canadian families uh, through the Canada Child Benefit, over $26 billion in annual Canada Child Benefit payments. And we've increased the Canada Child Benefit last year uh, on July 20th to keep up with the, with the increase in the cost of living. And we're providing an additional 1,000, up to $1,200 per child under the age of six for low income and middle income families already receiving the Canada Child Benefit. So together we are ensuring that uh, we can build a recovery that, that gives an opportunity to all women in Canada and all children allowing all women with children to have the opportunity to participate in the labor market and give each and every child a real chance at success. So the time for national early learning and childcare is now, and together with all the different players in Canada, we will get it done. Thank you, merci beaucoup. Thank you so much, Minister. That was very insightful. I'm very excited to see what, what is to come. Uh, right now, I'd like to welcome Ryan on. Ryan, you're going to give us your perspective for what's happening. You know, like many centers, uh, lots of questions that are coming out. But uh, Ryan, please do start us off. Great. Well, thank you, Ria. And uh, I want to begin by expressing my support for a national child care program that can you know, do all of those things that the minister spoke about. The four pillars are so key to this quality, affordability, inclusivity, and accessibility. 
Um, I think these are critical goals that, that ought to be invested in. Um, and I also wanna thank the minister for joining us today. Having open forums with diverse opinions being shared is, is so critical to the public policy process and will certainly pay off in the long run as a national child care program takes shape. So let's paint the obvious. Um, this is an incredibly complex endeavor. It is complex socially, it is complex politically, it is complex logistically, and certainly complex financially. Um, but it has the potential to be transformative for this country and would certainly alter the landscape across Canada. I think the big question that all parties, including uh, us on the call, must grapple with is, how is it going to be implemented? Uh, because we have seen past attempts fail with, with previous governments, I think it is fair for the early childhood community to ask that question, um, but also recognize that, that perhaps we are at a different time. So I wanna go through some of the, the good uh, and some of the challenges over the next uh, three or four minutes. Uh, and starting with quality, uh, this has to be the backbone of any childcare plan. Quite literally, without quality, nothing else matters. Creating low quality childcare for the sake of creating spaces is counterproductive. And while it may indeed provide short-term gains, it would not benefit the country as a whole in the long run. So quality is something that operators literally must obsess over. It is a 24-7, 365 day a year obligation. There's no other way around it. And this plan, uh, as it's written right now, I think starts to put in place some support for operators uh, that can help them meet or exceed quality standards as well as make considerable investment in educators, which is such a key part of quality. When we talk about affordability and, and much like quality, having an abundance of childcare spaces uh, are not as effective as they could be if they are not affordable. It's hard enough finding spaces in many areas of this country uh, where we really should find a way to take cost out of the equation for parents. A critical part of this plan will be to make it affordable for parents while also recognizing that operating a child care center properly is very expensive. So low fees and high operating costs directly conflict with each other, but I think there is a way to find support for operators while at the same time reducing fees for family. Uh, that's going to be a critical consideration in this plan. When we look at inclusivity, uh, I, I, the word that comes or the term that comes to mind for me is childcare for all irrespective of socioeconomic status, creed, gender, disabilities, ethnic or race related grounds, quite frankly, any other area that a person or family could possibly be discriminated on. Uh, but this goes deeper than just having spots available. It, it must also speak to lesson planning and facilities and catering. Uh, and certainly with the tragic news coming from uh, the former residential schools across this country, uh, we have to embrace the fact that Canada is a different country now. Uh, we are a cultural mosaic um, and our child care ought to reflect that fact with culturally, uh, culturally appropriate programming and spaces. So inclusivity is very important uh, as we go forward on this. And the final item, uh, accessibility. The, the Canadian landscape uh, has, has been changing for many years, but, but certainly it's been changing uh, faster with, with COVID. COVID has driven so many people out of city centres into suburbs and beyond this is creating new stresses on previously well-served areas or actually exasperating historically underserved communities that now have a population boom. Uh, so this plan should look at supporting expansion across all childcare options to meet the demands of families. Um, and, and, and all in on the positive side, I think the foundation of the plan is strong um, and it's not without its challenges. And I think that's something to be expected for any type of transformative effort like this. Um, as we look at some of the challenges at a top level, I, messaging is going to be key. Um, and, and let's be very clear, assuming we have an election this year, uh, this is functionally a referendum for Canadians from coast to coast to decide on. In my opinion, and I'm biased, we are a, a for-profit operator, but I'm, I'm very well versed on the, on the other operators out there. Uh, we have to move beyond the broad stroke rhetoric of, of nonprofit versus for-profit centers. Um, I've seen it less and less, which is, which is great. Um, but I, I want to get the, the conversation beyond that and focus more on quality. The reality is, is that the, the business model one operates under does not guarantee quality. Are there wonderful not-for-profit childcare operators out there? Absolutely. Are there wonderful for-profit operators? Absolutely. Um, and on the flip side, are, are there some where quality is an issue and, and accessibility is an issue and, and fees are, are the issue in both business models? I think the answer is yes. And, and that's where we can focus our time and effort is to solve that problem um, and, and while understanding that 
a healthy mixture of, of different types of centers of home based of center based of for profit uh, drop in uh, not for profit, all of that is going to create a ecosystem of childcare in this country um, that's going to help parents. So I'm, I'm optimistic that that is uh, going to be part of this plan. I also want to touch quickly on the Quebec model. The, the minister mentioned it, and it's something that uh, certainly has been a, a good case study uh, for this plan to be based off of. The, the Quebec model really demonstrates uh, what I just mentioned, which is a, a flexible and accessible mix of, of spaces are going to be needed. Um, and there certainly are a lot of positives that we can extract from the Quebec experience. The program has been very successful in achieving some of its goals, you know, notably bringing women back to the workforce, significantly decreasing costs for parents, and increasing availability of spaces. These are all positives that I think provide an excellent foundation to build out this plan. But the problem, or the, the program has evolved over the years, and, and naturally so. What was once envisioned as a program almost exclusively run by the province has morphed very much into a system that has a variety of operators and options, home-based, center-based, for-profit, not-for-profit, et cetera. The, the big difference that we see now between Quebec and the other provinces is it really comes down to financial investment, uh, which in itself has functionally created at least two tiers of support for families there. Um, so I, I think from uh, at least my research and, and some of the uh, comments that I've seen uh, in, in the news, a, a one-size-fits-all model directly taking the Quebec model and applying it to other provinces uh, that's not going to work because it, Quebec in itself is not a one size fits all model. Um, but it's not a criticism of the Quebec plan. It's more of a recognition that we can indeed learn from their experiences uh, and, and hopefully improve upon them. So Quebec provides a, an excellent foundation for, for this plan moving forward. And in closing, uh, I just wanna say that if a national childcare program is to avoid some of the pitfalls of past attempts, and these are historical attempts, they, they do need to focus on those four pillars, the affordability, accessibility, high quality and inclusivity. These items can be achieved with a healthy mixture of childcare centers and with the right investments. They can be achieved by leveraging and further supporting the considerable infrastructure in place currently across the country. So let's use the ambitious federal funding to, to force operators of all stripes to meet or exceed the pillars, which will benefit families. Let's create a childcare system where operators strive to be leaders on quality, on facilities, on programming, and we push each other towards excellence rather than complacency. So with increased funding and ensuring parent choice remains a core foundation, this is how, in my opinion, you drive excellence in childcare from coast to coast. So I thank you for the opportunity, and I, I certainly wish uh, the minister and his team well as they go down this path. Thank you so much, Ryan. Uh, Minister Hussein, I'd love if you have any points that you'd like to make based on Ryan's comments and, and his perspective, I'd love for you to, to jump in here. I, uh, I really enjoyed listening to, to your intervention and, and, and benefiting from your insights. I think there's uh, one of the things that I want to highlight that you said is that, uh, you know, in addition to Quebec, there's a number of other countries that have done this successfully and I've spoken to all of them and I think one of the advantages of going after them is that we have the benefit of learning about uh, some of their successes but also some of the challenges they faced on their path to implementing this system and so definitely there is a lot of lessons to learn from Quebec and from the Nordic countries and others who have done this very successfully but uh, they're, they're also very open to say that um, that uh, initially there was some growing pains and we have the luxury now of learning from those growing pains and avoiding those early, uh, early challenges so that we can get it right. Thank you so much, Ryan. Also, thank you so much for, for your perspective, your point of view, um, some extremely fun and exciting insights from, from both of you here. So I'm going to now welcome on uh, Amanda. Amanda, if you can join us here, we would love to hear your perspective, your point of view on what's what the changes are. Hi, everyone. So great to be here, Minister Hussein. It's so lovely to meet you virtually. Uh, I have I'm just so excited that we are even having a conversation around inclusive childcare and to hear Minister Hussein and Ryan 
say so many of the things that I've been arguing for years around inclusive childcare it really is a true opportunity, especially as someone like me, who's a queer single mother, small business owner uh, who just cares so deeply about childcare. Uh, so let me give you a bit of my background. A couple of years ago, I started a childcare company to solve my own problems. I put my house on the line and my financial livelihood at risk because I wanted to see what might happen to parents' productivity and the success of working parents like me if we made their days easier. Because I needed my day to be easier. I'm a mom of two kids, one who just turned seven, one who was four. They could not be more thrilled that today is the last day of virtual school. Uh, I think the only thing they've said today is, mom, did you know today is the last day of virtual school? <laughs> and summer starts tomorrow. Uh, I own the Workaround, which is a 13,000 square foot co-working space with childcare here in Toronto, in East Toronto. Uh, I brought childcare to co-working by converting an old bank location and I added a childcare room. And side note, there's something so delicious about converting a bank vault to a nap suite for tired parents. Less than two years later, COVID-19 hit. And we all know on this call that the pandemic disrupted childcare. And for a moment, amidst the crying from parents, it seemed like we finally understood what childcare means for a functional economy. From my perspective though, we didn't. Let me be very clear. I am yelling about childcare often. This is not an issue just for parents. I want us to really think about what happens to the economy if only some can participate. The current childcare landscape doesn't serve women and non-binary individuals. When I opened in 2018, I thought we'd serve 20, maybe 40 families. 846 families, unique families and 220 children have come through our door since 2018. And we've been closed for most of a year as part of COVID. Entrepreneurs, flex workers, professors, all of the working parents who cannot commit to full-time, Monday to Friday, nine to five care. 30% of the workforce works precarious, contract, freelance, and flex work. Childcare does not support them. I've sold out my July and August spaces. I'm reopening for the first time and after eight consecutive months of lockdown. It is no question to me that parents need a new childcare model that supports the future of work. And I think we agree from what I've heard from Minister Hussein and Ryan, that the future of work means an inclusive childcare model. 30% of the workforce will be left out of any accessible childcare model if it doesn't account for drop-in, flex, private and nonprofit models. Just like Ryan said, the nonprofit for-profit dichotomy is false. Not every daycare is a high quality, not every nonprofit daycare is a high profit, a high quality center and not every for-profit is a big bad evil Walmart. If you take one point from me today, it's this. If we do not build for the future of work, we will have an insufficient universal childcare model that's not unlike the universal healthcare system that fails to address mental health, pharma care, eye care, IVF amongst others. It is frustrating for me that even when the problems of working in childcare are delivered to our faces every morning through Zoom calls, where we can't unsee the chaos behind us as we work from home with our kids, that we still haven't figured out how to fix childcare. And it sounds immense to fix it, and it is, to solve childcare and work friction. And I know it's not gonna happen all at once and it's not gonna be any one person who fixes it. But I do believe and I'm pretty optimistic that childcare can be redesigned by us, including the non-parents on this call. Here's where I get real. Creating a just recovery for parents is good for Canada. It's good for business. All the talk of hybrid work is a good example of this. If employees get to make a decision of how they work, flex work, where they work, then it makes sense that they get to choose the providers, ones that support their whole selves and the way they work. There's not a question to them about for-profit, non-profit. It's about quality of care and the options to get to work and stay at work. And this is important because a choice to return to work is false. Choice 
with working and parenthood is an illusion. I couldn't choose parenthood. I need to work. And I cannot stop being a parent and I can't stop working. And if childcare costs thousands of dollars a month and I'm only barely earning enough to pay for childcare, then how am I supposed to also pay for a mortgage, a Metro Pass groceries and any kind of small luxuries? I end up leaving my job for something more flex. We cannot fund one type of childcare only. That model is in real trouble. All the owners and operators on this call know this. In the spring of 2020, overnight in Ontario, a demand crisis replaced a childcare supply crisis. From reopening and repeated lockdowns, we've gone from two year wait lists and $2,000 a month per kid for childcare in Toronto on average to childcare centers across the country the city and the province running at 10% occupancy and no business is surviving at 10%. I want us to imagine a better way of working that allows our whole selves at work and consider how we can bring the personal to work so that we can be professional and productive. The worst thing we can do in this recovery is go back to normal. I saw a tweet the other day that said the problem with hybrid work and employee driven decisions of where to work is that the mom is gonna be out of the office three days a week and the young single white male will be there five days a week. And we won't see the impact of this until there are promotion disparities years from now. So while I could talk about this for many more hours, I just want to plead to everyone on this call to remember that there isn't one type of work, there isn't one type of schedule, there isn't one type of childcare model and to fund something that supports flex drop in in the future of work means we all come back stronger and parents like me can go back to thriving. Thank you. Amanda, thank you very much for that very real perspective, uh, along with Ryan, of course, but as well being yourself being a mom and and giving that point of view. So, uh, Minister, I'd like to welcome you. Would you like to uh, give any you know remarks on Amanda's perspective and, and how this will go together? Well, thank you so much, Amanda, for uh, for sharing your insights. Uh, I think we're we we are very very fortunate to hear from you and 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 really some of the challenges uh, moving forward facing women uh, and and why we need to pay particular attention to to some of the the nuances in our approach so that uh, so that uh, uh, people are not disadvantaged. I would argue that. Uh, we we absolutely need to pay attention to flexibility. Yes, uh, you know we are saying that um, you know we haven't ruled out private sector participation in this system. What we're saying is that you know we recognize that the private sector has a role and has continued to play a role and will continue to play a role, but we prefer nonprofit growth of spaces because that's where. Uh, the, the best quality is delivered. Having said that, I, I'm a realist and I'm pragmatic to know that the private sector you know, has played and will continue to play a role. Uh, second to that, in terms of the flexibility and some of the, some of the other um, uh, pieces in, in terms of the innovation around making sure that the system actually works for different parents facing different uh, uh, circumstances, that's up to the provinces and territories. We are going to fund uh, more affordable spaces, we're going to cut fees and we're going to pay uh, for the training of, of ECEs. But that doesn't stop the provinces to also use some of their money uh, for, for some of those uh, approaches. So uh, we're not opposed to that. What we are saying is federal dollars should only go to regulated spaces and we prefer, uh, we prefer uh, nonprofit growth. But we also acknowledge that the, the, the profit sector is there and we, 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 we know that they'll continue to play a role. Amanda, thank you once again, and Minister, thank you so much uh, as well. Let's jump in. We only have a, a couple of minutes here, so I wanted to just jump into a couple of questions that we had submitted for you, Minister, and you're already on the topic of, of course, talking about, you know, what where the funding is going to go, and I wanted to jump in. Of course, you've said federal government, 
they've suggested, you've suggested yourself here for a non-for-profit focus on uh, licensed childcare. Um, you know, we've seen the suggestion of around a 65-35 funding split. Um, maybe could you comment a little bit more on the plan direction for funding for profit, you know, social profit childcare, drop-in, private and home-based uh, centers. Um, what are the plans and, and how can we continue the conversation to include, sorry, to include more flexible, uh, you know, work plans for parents? Oh, Minister, I think you're muted. Sorry. As I said earlier, uh, our main focus is that federal money can only go to regulated childcare spaces. Now, regulated childcare spaces include uh, for-profit spaces. It also includes nonprofit. It, it also includes public entity spaces, like spaces provided by under municipalities or universities or uh, hospitals and so on. So it runs that spectrum. Federal money should not be going to informal um, childcare setups, like uh, you know, uh, kids being given childcare uh, by their grand grandparents, for example. There's nothing wrong with that, but it just doesn't deliver the early learning opportunities that uh, a system would deliver. So uh, we are saying that uh, for federal money to go into into those childcare spaces, it has to be a childcare space that is regulated by the province or the territory. So that would mean that if a if if a if a for profit space is regulated, that's fine. If a, if a, a, and that would also include non profit and public spaces. Um, we do support parents uh, with the costs of raising their children through the Canada Child Benefit, but if we are keen to deliver high quality, inclusive, accessible, and affordable childcare, the best way to do that is to build a system. Uh, tax credits don't deliver high quality childcare. You have to build, you have to invest in a system. You have to invest in the recruitment and training of early childhood educators, and you have to build that infrastructure. That's how you do it. Fantastic. Um, Minister, we, I'm going to jump into one last question because I'm being conscious of time here as well. Um, like many others, we know that during the pandemic, educators, they stepped up to continue offering care for families. It was a very unknown area for educators. And we know that in the past, there, there's been a bit of a you know, a bad view put on educators. They've been viewed as babysitters, you know, extremely undervalued in many situations. How do you think the new ELCC will help, you know, bring educators maybe some more pay, more professionalism as we do grow over the next couple of years? So even before budget 2021, our government uh, through the fall economic statement put forward an investment of $420 million to go to provinces and territories to pay for more recruitment uh, to recruit more early childhood educators, to train them more, to incentivize them more. We understand that it's really, really important uh, for both for quality and for increasing affordable childcare spaces. You can't do any of that without a highly motivated, highly, you know, well-paid, uh, well-trained uh, and expanded early childhood edu educator workforce. So we have that strategy, the $30 billion that uh, we're proceeding with in terms of building this Canada-wide system, which is essentially the next chapter of early learning and childcare in Canada will include uh, a focus also on early childhood educators, because as I said, they are at the heart of this system that we're proposing. We can't do that without them, and we have to invest in them, motivate them, and, and, and value their work. Thank you so much, Minister. I would like to open the floor for you here. Is there any last comments you'd like to leave us with today? I would say that, uh, you know, for a long time, uh, provinces and territories and stakeholders and uh, advocates for early learning and childcare have been calling on the government of Canada to put forward significant and long term investments in early learning and childcare. We are the first government in Canadian history to do so. We have put forward $30 billion plan over the next five years to build a Canada wide system that is affordable delivers high quality early learning and childcare that's accessible to all kids and that is inclusive of all children. We also intend to provide long-term and permanent funding after the five years, 9.2 billion each year after that. So the government of Canada has listened. Now the ball is in the court of provinces and territories. 
they need to join us in this journey. We can't do it without them. But the government of Canada has come forward. We've put our plan on the table. We'll negotiate in good faith. We need provinces and territories to come forward and join us on this journey so that we can build a, a, a Canada-wide system that will make sure that no child is left behind uh, to get a good early childhood education from coast to coast to coast. Minister Hussein, thank you so much for being with us today, for giving us some more insights as to what is to come, for being the advocate that you are. Um, I'm very excited to see what is to come over the next couple of years. Uh, it'll be very, very interesting, but thank you for taking some time out of your very busy schedule to be with us here today. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Merci. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, we are going to jump up into our, our wrap up here today. And before I do, just wanted to highlight going to we're going to be sending out these show notes to you shortly. So expect them by early next week, folks, um, this will have the recording we will have the slides available to you. And wherever you are, please enjoy some, you know, celebration this weekend. Uh, take some time to be with family if you can safely, but have a great and happy Canada Day. Before we do jump off, I know, Amanda, I'm going to bring you back on you just wanted to leave us with a thought or two as well. I just wanted to thank you so much for creating space to talk around the different childcare models and also for calling out the quality of, of early learning and educators and supporting the wages uh, of ages, fair wages for early childhood educators is so critical to quality deployment. Uh, you know, I believe that the argument on how to solve the childcare issue has been misdirected in a lot of ways and it shouldn't be about who should solve it, it should be about the outcomes as I think a lot of us have said here, as long as we achieve those outcomes for the children, it shouldn't matter what format it's provided in. That's the distraction. In terms of outcomes, there's three things we need to focus on. Is it quality provided by an REC? Is it affordable? And is it accessible to parents? And it's number three that I'm most particularly focused on because I think it's the underserved outcome. 30% of the workforce doesn't work nine to five. But outcomes for children is, is really a critical thing here. And I, and I believe everyone on this call is aligned on that. So thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much, Amanda. Very well said, both you and Ryan, and of course the minister have made some really fantastic points today. Uh, folks, if you haven't had the chance, we'd love for you to subscribe to our preschool podcast. We actually have a session that uh, the minister and our CEO, Ron, have just made. It will be becoming available on July 5th. Uh, so extremely exciting to have that. If you'd like to hear a little bit more, highly recommend. We'll be sending out the links in the show notes for you if you wanna subscribe on Spotify or Apple, podcast, whichever you like, uh, we'll be sending that out for you. Um, lastly, folks, please do stay healthy, stay happy, stay safe, uh, and take care over this long weekend. Thank you so much for being a part of our webinar today and our session, and we hope that you have uh, the next couple of days are relaxing. Take care and thank you all.